to prevent the rise of Russia and China. That's the US government statement. That's one piece of evidence of an accelerated conflict. The Indian effectively foreign minister, the Minister of External Affairs, S. Jay Shankar, was at a press conference with the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Now, Blinken and Jay Shankar were speaking just hours after US President Joe Biden and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had spoken. Um, the main issue on the table was to get India to accept the US position regarding Ukraine. And there was a lot of lecturing going on, I must say, about what India should do, particularly that India should cut energy purchases from Russia. It's got to be said that India, like Japan, has a minimal energy purchases from Russia. About six or seven percent of imported energy comes from Russia. But nonetheless, India um, has quite close relations with Russia and didn't want to take an antagonistic position. The Indian foreign minister, as Jay Shankar, was asked at this press conference, you know, why doesn't India cut its energy purchases? Once again, there was a lot of finger wagging uh, in his face. Now, he's quite a sober man. And he said, what Europe imports in energy is worth looking at. He said, what India imports in a month from Russia, Europe imports in an afternoon. Look into that. His last sentence was, look into that. I think this is the important thing, that for countries like India, like Japan, like South Korea, which have close relationships to the United States, they understand that we live in a world of complexity, not in a world of certainty. They don't want the certainties of Washington, you know, what appear to be certainties of Washington to be imposed on them. In essence, I think these countries, and I'm emphasizing these three, because these three have very close relationships with Washington. Nonetheless, all three of these countries have basically suggested that they understand the world is a very complicated place. They are motivated by contradictions, how to deal with the contradictions. And they don't want to have a kind of suffocating certainty placed upon them. A false suffocating certainty, I should say. And in a sense, this is what the war in Ukraine is about. It's about a false suffocating certainty that has been placed on Europe. You see, in terms of the security architecture, the United States has been imposing a kind of Atlantic security on Europe since the end of World War II. NATO is essentially a Trojan horse of the United States. It has yoked European countries into its security architecture and has driven European countries through NATO into catastrophic wars in Afghanistan, in Libya, and now, of course, with all this talk about Asian NATO and global NATO. Um, not sure if France and Germany and Italy and others want to really get involved in a conflict in the South China Sea, but nonetheless, that's exactly what global NATO is enforcing. But there's also the economic question. Um, Europe has been yoked into a kind of Atlantic economy where U.S. investment in Europe is minimal. I mean, it's quite stunning to consider that Poland, Poland, a country governed by the right, joined the Belt and Road Initiative in 2019. The Polish government didn't need much convincing to join the Belt and Road. In fact, most Eastern European countries joined the Belt and Road and so did Italy. Now, in a sense, Europe is facing a serious contest over its own self-respect. Is Europe a lily pad, the doormat of the United States? Or should Europe naturally integrate into Eurasia? I think this has really been the issue on the table. Natural integration of European states into Eurasia seems to me um, the more rational outcome for European governments. After all, look at the situation Germany is placed in now. 
Germany is reliant upon Russian energy, reliant. Over 30% of energy comes from Russia. That's a rational reliance. It is far cheaper to buy natural gas through a pipeline from Russia than to buy liquefied natural gas from the United States. So Germany, like Japan, like South Korea, like India, is caught in the contradictions of the moment, cannot allow these false certainties to be placed on it. And when I talk about false certainties, I want to be clear that these false certainties are very dangerous. As Professor Zhang Weiwei said, $2 trillion military spending. And if we're actually honest, US military budget is much greater than 700 billion because that doesn't include the intelligence budget and that doesn't include the nuclear budget, which is hidden away in the Department of Energy numbers. US military spending is closer to a trillion dollars. Um, I would say that it is the most catastrophic use of human resources that we see in the planet today, a planet with hunger, climate, housing catastrophe, lack of electrification for people. Here's the key thing for me. The United States, rather than welcome, rather than welcome the G20 countries, rather than welcome the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, rather than partner with these countries to deal with the dilemmas of humanity, the United States has actually accelerated a conflict which is unnecessary for the world. And what's the evidence of that acceleration? I'm just going to put two pieces of evidence on the table. Firstly, in 2018, the United States National Defense Strategy announced that the war on terror is over and that the new conflict is a conflict to prevent the rise of Russia and China. That's the US government's national defense strategy of 2018, which has not been um, overturned by the Biden administration. When that strategy was put on the table, Jim Mattis, the defense secretary, said in an interview that near peer rivals like China and Russia will not be allowed to rise. That's the US government statement. That's one piece of evidence of an accelerated conflict. Second, when the Trump administration said that the policy of the United States is now to prevent the rise of Russia and China, at the same time, the US government unilaterally withdrew from the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty. Now, by withdrawing from the INF Treaty, the United States has essentially invalidated the entire arms control regime and has, has put directly on the table the fact that it considers the use of battlefield nuclear weapons against Russia and China. Now, this is an acceleration of the conflict. It's this, it's to this that the Russians uh, refer when they talk about the need for security guarantees. What the Russians have said effectively is they would like to return to the table and create a new arms control regime. That's absolutely essential for the sake of humanity. Yes, it's true what Professor Zhang Weiwei said, that it is possible that in the near term, new kinds of globalization will emerge, new forms of financial dealing and so on. But I also feel that the countries of the world, the revitalized non-aligned movements and so on that are emerging, the countries of the world don't want to face a choice between a pole called Washington or a pole called the West and a poll called Russia and China. Nobody wants the bifurcation of the world. We want to live in a unitary world, but we would like choices. We don't want to live under the yoke of the International Monetary Fund. We would like choices. Belt and Road is providing a choice. So is the People's Bank of China's currency swaps. What we want is a world where the dilemmas of humanity are taken in hand, where hunger is abolished, where we can learn from what the Chinese government did to abolish absolute poverty. We want to get rid of illiteracy. These are the dilemmas of humanity. This new Cold War being foisted by the West, that's not a dilemma of humanity. That's a false crisis. And so we want to deal with real crises. And I think that's the reason why, 
even countries like Japan, South Korea, India, Germany, countries that are not, you know, uh, very distant from Washington, are unhappy with this situation. They don't want false dilemmas of humanity to captivate them. They want to deal with the real problems we face. And I think that's why, as Professor Zhang Weiwei said, there is such disagreement over what's happening in Ukraine. Ukraine has opened the door, I think, to a new kind of thinking. And, and I hope our conversation will contribute to that in some small way. Mm -hmm.